Join us for a look at At the Ready, the latest expansion for Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances that was just released this past weekend at Gen Con. Thanks to the op for getting us an early review copy of this expansion back at Origins. So Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances and the At the Ready expansion for it were all designed by Sean Fletcher, sometimes known as Flet. And as Sean just said, they were published by the op, uh, sometimes known as USAopoly. This is the fourth expansion for Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances. Now, while this expansion is fully integrable and compatible with the previous expansions, you will need a copy of the base game, base core game set in order to use these new characters. Now, in the case of this expansion, those new characters happen to be Mrs. Potts from Beauty and the Beast, Robin Hood, and Mulan from, well, Robin Hood and Mulan. Now, as you can see in our At The Ready unboxing video on YouTube, what you get matches what came in the previous expansions. Standees, 10 card decks for each of the characters, some extra status tokens, and a short rulebook. Now, the only new rule presented here is the same one that's been in every expansion release so far, and that is the rules for constant abilities, which were originally introduced in Turning the Tide. There's no new status effects or any funky stuff like new terrain tiles or token characters. Well, let's get to each of the new characters and what they bring to the game. All right, I'm going to start off with Mrs. Potts. I would call her a support character. She has a basic move of two, provides two cards to your hand, but only a basic attack of one and fairly low health at seven. Now, her deck is a real mixed bag with most cards, depending on what her allies are doing, with multiple cards giving a reward for her being next to an ally on a crown space. She also has a number of cards that let you draw cards from your deck. So while playing with her on your team, you don't tend to get that thing where partway halfway through the game, you're down to a hand of only two or three cards to work with. Now, to go with that, she has a skill you're going to want to use every turn. This lets her draw a card from the top of the deck and then place a card from your hand, either on top of the deck or the bottom. So something from your hand. It could be the one you just drew. Now, speaking of drawing cards, she also has a pretty cool constant ability that anytime anyone from your team draws a card and it's a Potts card, that character gets to move one square. No, not even necessarily on Potts' turn. Or if your opponent makes you draw a card. Now, finally, a number of her cards have abilities that go off when they're discarded. These cards make perfect move and attack boost cards to use on other characters' turns and combo well with anyone who causes you to discard cards to make their abilities go off. Well, next we have Robin Hood, who, as you would expect, has a number of ranged attack cards. Even his skill lets you turn any attack into a range 2 attack if you discard an attack card. Robin is also very good at hiding and can often spend most of the battle with the stealth status effect on him. Now, while some of this comes from his cards, the main place you will get stealth from is the constant ability that grants him one stealth whenever you gain exactly one crown. Then we get to the most thematic part of this character. Robin is all about stealing from the rich to help the poor, and this is respectfully reflected on almost every card in his deck, which has some form of additional effect if played when you're a opponent has more crowns than you. Now, stat-wise, Robin gives you two cards, has the standard two move to attack, which can be raided into that range two attack with his skill, and a chunky nine health, which, when combined with stealth, makes him really hard to take out. Now, that leaves us with Mulan, who plays like a frontline support character. She has standard attack and defense, but nine health and a large number of high damage attack cards. She also has her abilities that give her either tough or strong conditions that back up that frontline role. This is reinforced by her level up ability, which gives her a number of tough tokens that she can spend to defend allies next to her. Now, as a support character, she can heal almost dead characters with a skill, giving two hit points to anyone with two or fewer hit points to start with. And she can also pass off strong to other princess characters. She also has one of the most powerful skills in the game, letting her do two automatic damage to an adjacent rival, but only if that rival is next to two non-token allies. This is huge, but hard to pull off. But when you can combine that with one of her powerful attack cards, you can take out many of the characters in the game in one turn. Now, another ability that I haven't really gotten to use to good effect yet, but seems powerful, are some cards that do damage and remove status effect from the target. 
I think these could be great against the right opponents, but they never really worked well in the games I played because removing invulnerable, tough, or no punchbacks after you hit just isn't the best use of those cards. Well, now that we have some idea of what these characters can do, who was your favorite? I, I actually really enjoyed Mrs. Potts, which is a character out of all the ones that have been reused for the game. I probably care the less about least about it as far as Disney lore film wise. Like, I, come on, it's the teapot from from uh, I don't care. But I love the way she works during the game. She's a fantastic support character that includes some never before seen deck management abilities. I adore the way you can get rewarded for discarding her cards from your hand. After all, Mrs. Potts is all about serving others. It's also nice to play Sorcerer's Arena with lots of cards in your hand from the beginning to the end of the game. It's so nice to have more options in the late game. Yeah, I really agree, because I messed up the first time we used this expansion, and I just plain played her wrong. I misunderstood the discard power and was expecting her to need to discard not any time a discard happened, uh, and this really undersold her to me, so I didn't see her true potential until I had her used correctly against me. Yeah. So now, what was Rob your favorite? Uh, now, Robin Hood, I got a feel for right away. The only problem I had with him was spending too much time thinking about who he would combo well with in later games instead of focusing <laughs> okay. on the game I was playing. He's just a fantastic ranged character, but with the steal from the rich ability, you don't need to worry about staying in the lead all the time as you can plan for some nice, powerful combos if you get behind by a couple of crowds. I also really dug Robin, uh, honestly, and always. He's a fun character to play, and man, does he annoy your opponents when you keep getting rewarded for him, for them winning all the time. And people hate having their crowns stolen from them. Every time I've done someone to, people are like, mine, no. <laughs> yeah, that might actually be the biggest change people have to adapt to with this expansion is now knowing that your collected crowns aren't safe anymore. Yeah, I think there was one other card for one character in previous sets that also stole it, but that was one where Robin has a number of them. Now that leaves us with Mulan. I feel kind of bad, like we're, we're leaving her in the dust here. She seems okay, but just not, nothing really stuck out. She just didn't seem that great a character. Now, I think on the right team, she could be fantastic, but just her abilities just didn't excite me. Now, I got to say, looking at the game, I play this game for fun. I play casually. I'm into neat card combos and doing neat things. Maybe for organized play, Mulan's like the best character they ever released. It's like you'll never get better DPS than you will with Mulan. But she just wasn't as fun to play as some of the other characters in the game. Now, what I am curious about, though, is her ability triggering on the princess tag. There haven't been a lot of those yet. And it makes me want to try her in an all princess team. Maybe I'd have more fun playing her with a bunch of other princesses. Yeah, so I agree that while I don't think we found her perfect team yet, the princess potential is there. And it may just take a more regular player or the next expansion to really have her shine to her full power. Now, overall, this is another solid set of characters for Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances. This is a game we're still enjoying. We're still playing it pretty regularly. I love getting to try out new characters and seeing how this game has evolved over time. Yeah, this set of characters really had me thinking more about teams and combining of characters, as the cast list has now grown to a point with this fourth expansion where there's something for almost any playstyle available. Well, part of me wishes this expansion included something new for the game, like a new character token. Like, wouldn't Chip be a perfect character to, to put with Mrs. Potts? Or the Merry Men for Robin? Where's Little John? Or perhaps Terrain Tiles. Come on, Sherwood Forest Tiles would have fit in great. I do appreciate, though, that they didn't do this, that there's nothing new to learn here. There isn't even a new skill. It's all the existing skills from the base game. This makes this a great first expansion for new players or for players who have not been keeping up as all the releases came out. Now, for me, I wasn't expecting any new features, knowing the characters from the digital version, but I can certainly see how not knowing the digital, this box could be a tiny bit of a letdown with just the three characters and nothing new and fancy added on. Now, based on what I've seen online from reactions to posts from the op and our own content we put out after Origins, people seem to be extremely hyped about getting Robin. And I can easily see this being the first Sorcerer's Arena expansion that many people pick up. And I think it's a solid one. 
And I think they should be excited. I expect for many, he's the reason to buy this. And the other two characters are just a happy bonus. Not really a lot more to say here. Uh, if you dig Sorcerer's Arena, pick it up. If you don't, this isn't going to change things in any significant way that might make someone who didn't enjoy the originals suddenly like it. So skip it. Especially if you're looking for the range and flexibility Robin gives you, or the deck management from Mrs. Potts. If you're a Mulan lover and know how to maximize her potential, we'd love to hear your strategies. At this point, I just took all this stuff, mixed it in with everything else, and all my characters are there. And if you ever sit down with me to play Disney Sorcerer's Arena, you now have 20 different characters to choose from, which is quite impressive. I can't wait to see what comes next. Now, speaking of Fletch, if you are listening, I want to see more stuff that modifies the arena in some ways. That is what I think is the next step for this game. New characters are cool, but I want to see new terrain tiles, some new character tokens, or something totally new. I feel that arena needs something for it. Add in some environmental effects, something that maybe is determined by a random card draw at the beginning of the game and affects both teams. Wouldn't that be cool? All right, well, that's it for our review of the Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances at the Ready Expansion. Have you been playing this Disney and Pixar-themed skirmish game? What's the best team you've come up with so far? Let us know in the comments, and maybe we'll try them out against each other. You can find out a lot more about Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances and its long name and its expansions over at the blog at tabletopbellhop.com.